Okay, so this is uh, Windows on Raspberry Pi 4, and this is the version from the Discord, so this is the stripped down version, the sort of custom image designed specially for Raspberry Pi 4. There's more information about it in yesterday's video. And uh, I've been running it with this USB SD card reader, and uh, I've been getting much better performance from that than I was from the SD card in the SD card slot but I'm getting even better performance uh, speed-wise from this crucial 240 gig drive, uh, which is basically plugged into USB 3. USB 3 seems to be working fine now. That said, I have had a few crashes which I didn't seem to have with the SD card. So let's go into screen capture. Okay, so in yesterday's video, I got a sequential write speed of 27.2 and a sequential read speed of 27.5. Uh, and as you'll see from these results, the speeds are way, way quicker. And it didn't take very long at all to do this particular test. Now, I have got some in-between results because from the comments, I had a few people saying that USB 3.0 was working fine for them. Uh, so USB 3.0 is working on this SSD drive, but its I would say it's a bit sketchy. Uh, I'm definitely getting every now and then it freezing. But my SD card in the USB reader in the USB 3.0 slot was giving me some really good results. So I'm gonna go back over to that. But let's see if this slows down now. Let's uh, let's just give it a little bit of a test and uh, without editing anything out. So let's start Edge. And uh, it's weird because sometimes it starts up super quick and sometimes like this time, it, it doesn't look like it's gonna start up. So if I try the folders, so that comes up nice and quick. Start bar, scrolling up and down, go into settings. See, all of this seems reasonably snappy, although settings seem to be making a bit of a meal of it. And it disappeared. So let's try Edge Browser again. Yeah, not working. So I, I think really it's best to, uh, I'll maybe come back and try SSD another time, or I might try and image the SD card I've got uh, onto the SSD drive because I know it's a working system and hopefully it will work. Uh, I'm not sure if it will. So I'm gonna go back to the most reliable one, which is the SD card in the USB reader. So let's shut that down because Edge doesn't seem to wanna to come up. Shuts down, all right? Okay, so let's unplug the SSD drive, which seems to be causing me problems, and let's plug in the SD card reader with the, it's a Kingston A2 card, one of the best SD cards I've got. So let's pop that in there and switch off, switch on and boot up. It seems to boot up quite nice and quick. Okay, so I played around with this yesterday uh, in the evening for a, probably a couple of hours um, and I was installing lots of games just to try and test them out, uh, Windows Store games, and uh, I didn't have a lot of success. Uh, so you can see here, uh, I've got all sorts of notifications. At one point I had 27 notifications of, of games that I'd installed and pretty much none of them properly worked. Um, but I did have some success, definitely with emulation. Um, but the Windows Store game I had that worked that I quite liked actually uh, was certainly not this one. This was pretty much the worst thing I've ever installed uh, because it, it doesn't even seem to be a game. Windows Store is definitely very heavy on the adverts and and just and quite sort of unprofessional compared to uh, the Android App Store and the uh, the Apple App Store on a like an iPad or an iPhone. So let's just get rid of that. It come, keeps coming up with that message. So this is what it comes up with, and I don't I don't quite understand where I'm supposed to go from here. It looks like it's just all clickable adverts and not actually a game. Uh, so there's. A sort of description of a game but there's no there's no actual game there now it may be because i'm running on uh windows on arm uh, it could be that you know if i used it on a normal windows computer it'll work but yeah i don't know what's going on there but i did i was quite happy with this one uh so this is a parking game and i i quite like parking games uh, i used to play them on my old second gen ipod touch but um i don't need full screen or i don't need Oh, it's music. I'm going to turn off the audio because uh, I'm not sure if the music is uh, going to be copyrighted. copyrighted. Uh, so let's get rid of that. And uh, oh, well, I played through the level eight yesterday, but uh, it doesn't seem to remember that. So it's just a simple uh, driving game, but it works with the keyboard and it's actually quite enjoyable to play. Uh, so let's 
There you go. So you just got to get right in the middle. Uh, what I'll do is I'll probably cut out some of these. Well, let's see if we can go super fast and oh, <laughs> how annoying is that? Do you want to play with the ads? No. Uh, so congratulations. Well, I got away with that anyway. And it just gets harder and uh, and a bit more. So so the early levels aren't great, um, but they're just kind of getting you into. Ooh. And sometimes it doesn't feel completely natural. There's no break either. You have to you have to press sort of forward and back. Uh, so yeah, this one's a little bit tighter there. And also my Logitech keyboard, the the cursors aren't the best cursors in the placement. It's better on a on a proper keyboard. And the car turns in. And I was spun out by these little sort of lights above. You see the lights that are there. On some levels, I thought you had to avoid them, but they are. Oh, but they are just headlights. Let's just get into there. There you go. And yeah, so now it gets more difficult. As you can see, so those lights, you don't have to avoid that. They're just scenery. But if we, this is a bit more like it, and it a bit more, a bit more tricky. Not many that you have to reverse into yet. Oh, where's the collision detection there, though? <laughs> How am I detecting? I'm, I'm pressing forward and right, and I don't think it looks like it's going to touch. Oh, what happened there? Okay, but it, it plays, I think, as it's meant to play. <laughs> I've done the right meal of this. Anyway, so that was uh, Park Your Car Future, and it's on the App Store, and I, I think it's pretty enjoyable to play. I'll, I'll see if I can do all 10 levels on that. So if I go back, uh, so yeah, the Bicycle Stunt Wheelie game, I just left it in there because it was laughable about how bad it looked. Old Plane worked but was incredibly slow. Because obviously a lot of the games are phone games and touch screen games. So touch the screen, you can touch with the mouse. And then if you press either left or right, you can see that it moves the plane. But I'm not sure how you start, oh, it's started now. Look. So you basically got to avoid all these tubes and stuff. But uh, I would imagine at, at full speed, oh, and also you tap the keys, right? If you press and hold, it doesn't do anything. There you go. So, and I haven't overclocked, so probably overclocking might make a difference on this. Oh, wrong way, wrong way. Anyway, another game working, kind of, uh, but it's another one that can be added on the list in the Discord. But uh, it is a bit too slow to be able to play. Although, because it's running so slow, maybe you'll get a record on it if anybody plays this. <laughs> anyway, so let's quit out of that. But I think it's just demonstrate. I'm trying not to edit things out. It's just demonstrating how things work. So if I open up Edge Browser, uh, I found that now uh, with this configuration, so SD card in the USB reader in the USB 3 slot is the best I think I've had Windows 10 on the Pi. Uh, YouTube actually works reasonable. Uh, it's uh, 720 is playable. 1080 is, I think 1080 when I tried it yesterday. Well, I'm running the operating system at 720, so there's no point in me playing 1080. Uh, so if I do leave PSP video HDR, use my normal uh, video. So let me get an advert. Let's skip that. Again, I'm trying to keep this so bit like my Mac video where I try not to do very many edit cuts. I just show you how the operating system is run. I press full screen, oh, there you go, so full screen. Full screen 720. This bit often looks a bit jerky, but I think it's handling it quite well. I think that's acceptable. Let's put the audio on. So I'm using my USB sound card. I could use the USB audio uh, trick, which uh, would, I could use the Bluetooth audio trick, which would enable me to uh, basically not have to plug in a USB sound card uh, as long as you've got a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, let's just do a few searches. So Hot UK Deals and click on that. I did find yesterday it was it was really quite nice to use and also the uh, Windows Store. Uh, I was, well I installed 27 games 
and uh, it was actually going pretty quick. You can see the scrolling is quite nice. Uh, if I open up another tab, it tended to be working quite well with that. There you go. So if we were to go to Sports Always Safe, so back to Hot UK Deals, close that one down, BBC Sport. You know, it doesn't run as fast as uh, Fido S, so Chromium OS on the Raspberry Pi that I did recently. Uh, it doesn't run as fast as, uh, as Twister OS or Raspberry Pi. Uh, they would be the ones you would use more as a desktop operating system, but there may be some apps that you want to get working through Windows that aren't available on Linux, and it's just another option. Uh, I always get the question, why would you run Windows on on a Raspberry Pi? And you know, sometimes it's just because we can. Uh, we, we enjoy messing about with these things, but also there may be a specific old app that you need to use for a particular reason to open up a file or something, and you can only get it on Windows. So this is SNES 9X. I plugged in my wireless Xbox 360 style controller. So if I go to recent games, I have Sunset Riders on here, which is a great game. You, When it started off, and I can't seem to get it back to that same mode, this is from, I think, 2003, I probably downloaded this emulator, um, because I, well, I'll go through it in a minute, I'll just play the game. Again, trying to keep it in real time, trying not to edit things out. Not getting any audio. And again, I don't know if the audio, just to show that the audio is working, I'll put the speaker on. But I'm not sure if I'll get copyright strike for playing that. So I'm going to turn that off. It's less enjoyable on the game, but. Oh, that's a nice move. Which one's fire? That's the fire. Right, okay. So Y is fire, which I wasn't expecting. But this runs actually well. So it runs fine. I think it runs full speed. So what's jump? That's jump. Let's jump and fire. Oh, I can't jump high enough. <laughs> Doing terribly here. That's better. Uh, and this, as a two-player game, is excellent. Oh, I can't jump down. Oh, yeah, I can. Really excellent as a two-player game uh, because it's like a co-op. Oh, it's a co-op game, and, uh, and I love it. So, as you can see, SNES is working fine. Uh, and again, I'm doing this without any edit cuts or anything like this. Uh, so I always get this overlay thing. I'm not sure how to get rid of that. So I have some ROMs on here. Um, this is interesting. So if you have a look at this, look, best game gear and master system, complete 100 ZX Spectrum and NES best of 26 games. So I used to use the all three of these ROMs uh, on a Game Boy Advance. Uh, so it was a Game Boy Advance where you had one of these uh, little things where you could put uh, an SD card or something in it to run the games from. And uh, so I basically put my favourite collection of Game Gear games, ZX Spectrum and NES, and you used to package them up and they became a Game Boy Advance game. So when you launch it on a Game Boy Advance, so on an original Game Boy Advance, this is the menu it would come up with. And so it would basically give you all the games. Uh, so if I wanted Galaga, I would just click on that. And you can see Gallagher launches, but this is the, uh, I can't remember which I clicked on now, NES version. And everything works with just the A and the B button and the start and select, just as you would expect on a Game Boy Advance. Let's move the mouse pointer out of the way. And I think most things, uh, well, certainly on the Game Boy Advance, most things ran full speed. But you've got to remember this is emulating NES through a Game Boy Advance emulator. And it's running all right. So if I do file and open again, uh, and just to show you the uh, 100 Spectrum games, so A to continue. Uh, so you had to do select new game, and you can see here that, so as I flick through, it's got loads BMX simulator, unusual for me to have a BMX game. So Bruce Lee, which was a decent game at the time. Not sure if there's audio with Average this. 100%. It says enter to begin the game. I think, oh yes, oh no. So what do I have to do? One player, two player. I don't know, because on the Game Boy you wouldn't have, oh there's a proper keyboard down the bottom, look. Okay, I can't seem to get that one to work. But uh, let's go back and, so winning 11, which is, uh, I think it's Pro Evolution Soccer, but on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, but this was the Japanese version. This was the best version of a football game on the Game Boy Advance.
by far, and I used to play this loads. And the menus, I just had to keep pressing the button to go all the way through because I never understood any of the, the menus. It runs a bit slow on this, um, but it's still quite enjoyable. That was the shoot button, not the pass button. Ambitious. So not full speed, um, but uh, but then actually I could probably adjust it. Um, I haven't played around with frame skip or anything like that. I've just literally put it on as is. What's the pass button? I can't even find. That's the pass button, right? And this was one with a, one of the first games with a through ball uh, on Game Boy Advance. There you go. So anyway, you can see that. Uh, again, something else working on the Pi. So let's close that down. And uh, yeah, so this, this comes from, uh, so these ROMs, so these emulators come from uh, an old thing I used to do, called, I used to call it Super Disk, and I used to put games, apps, ROMs, uh, music files, uh, photo files, very rarely videos, but it was old MPEG back then. But it would, it would have been in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s. And I've literally just taken these emulators from there. So there'll be newer versions, newer updated versions, but I just copied them over, uh, put them in my documents folder, and uh, and they worked. There you go, so there's my Game Boy Advance one, and I think, has it got, I don't know if, it, I don't know if the dates will be accurate, yeah, so 2002 here, that. So this would have been when I downloaded it originally, so there is a much more updated version, but I was just amazed, so since X64 came along, Although this wouldn't be a 64-bit app, I, I would be pretty sure. Well, it might be. Um, I found that the compatibility is better on quite a lot of things, especially on programs. Not so much on games, but especially on programs. Anyway, I'll do a speed test. Uh, and that's here, this Parkdale. You see that comes up nice and fast. Uh, I don't know if I showed how slow it was on my previous videos, but it did come up really slow before. And let's hit start. So the scores I was looking for, so this same setup, so the USB card reader with the SD card uh, plugged into USB 2, I got 27.2 and 27.5. I'm not sure which way around it was. So 27.2 I think was the uh, read speed and the write speed was 27.5. You can already see this is not doubled, but nearly doubled again. So we're getting much, much faster speeds than the SD card slot and also the SD card slot uh, with the with the patch that, that speeds it up. So at the moment, I think this is the best method for running Windows 10 and Raspberry Pi 4 that I found because my SSD was unstable. I could try a slower SSD and see if that works better, but I've tried a few SATA to USB cables and I've still been struggling with it. But uh, yeah, so I think, I think this is the best method. So USB 3 running the SD card through the SD card reader uh, with a reasonably fast, this is an A2 Kingston card and it is a good card. I'm gonna cut now uh, because I haven't got much more to say and uh, it's doing this speed test and it will do the, the read speed as well, but I'll go through it when I've done that. So up until now, uh, I've not cut anything out. So this has been Windows 10 running on Raspberry Pi 4 without me editing anything to try and make it look faster. I never do that to try and make it look faster. I make it to, to make it a more interesting video. There you go, and that's probably enough. I don't, let it fit, don't need to let it finish, but you're looking at 53 read and write, as I say, compared to USB 2 was 27.2 and 27.5. The USB 3 SATA SSD drive was super fast, uh, but unstable, so I think unusable. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.